Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to uh, our panel today. We're very lucky to have with us uh, three uh, regulators, central bankers, who are going to talk to us uh, about some issues around challenges uh, and outlook for regulation of innovation. We have with us uh, Praveen Rai from the National Payments Count Corporation of India. We have Nurin Youssef from the Arab Monetary Fund. We have Firas Altaf Hussein Abdul Baki Awlawati uh, from the Central Bank of Oman. Uh, and they can each introduce themselves a little bit more as, uh, as we come on uh, to, to the first questions. Um, but just to, to set the stage, uh, I wonder if I could ask each of you to, to talk a little bit uh, about your institution, about your role, and the sorts of uh, approaches that you're taking to fintech uh, innovation at the moment. Uh, and maybe uh, we'll start with uh, Pravina uh, and then move to, to Nuran, uh, and then finally uh, wrap up with, with Firas. So Pravina, what do you think? Thank you, Douglas. Uh, lovely to be here. Um, I'm work as the Chief Operating Officer at the National Payments Corporation of India. So we run the payment systems um, for the country. Um, and I will say that we perform a kind of quasi-regulatory role working under the aegis of the Reserve Bank of India. Um, however, responsible for, for managing, maintaining the full ecosystem associated with a number of payment systems. Uh, Rupee being one of the indigenous card schemes, UPI being a, a real-time payment system and so on. The approach to regulation of fintech, I think, uh, you know, fintech and regulation a few years back would have been, uh, you know, two words that didn't really sit together in the same sentence. But, you know, we are at, you know, much better times today. Uh, things have moved forward. The approach is a combination of um, empowering the fintech ecosystem um, and ensuring that there is still a focus on consumer protection and security. So there is empowerment and uh, you know, regulation that needs to go hand in hand in a very balanced manner um, in a way that we are able to foster innovation to the market. So that's kind of the broad approach that uh, is taken in India. Very good. Thanks for that. And we'll switch um, from sort of one direction to, uh, to Nuran, uh, who has uh, a much more sort of regional role. So, I mean, Nuran, perhaps you can comment about um, one, the, the, the sort of uh, portfolios you're covering, but two, also what you're seeing uh, across your operations. Thanks, Douglas. I'm really glad to be with you here in this distinguished panel with all uh, the esteemed colleagues. Uh, from a regional uh, perspective, the Arab Monetary Fund has initiated the Arab Fintech Working Group uh, like two years ago with one uh, strategic aim to uh, enhance or promote a proper fintech ecosystem in the Arab countries and to let it go. And we, 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 we really had one target as well to support Arab regulators in their mission so they can adopt regulatory and supervisory initiatives uh, that support innovation and improve regulatory efficiency. So, and uh, we really tried to have uh, a comprehensive, you know, uh, a flexible composition of this uh, FinTech working group so as to have a representation from all the ecosystem. So we have our main regulators, which are mainly the central banks, capital market authorities, and some uh, fin um, f uh, finance ministers. In addition to regulators, we have banks, service providers, fintech companies, banks, and banking uh, in associations, fintech hubs within the region, some academia, and uh, international organization. This uh, based on a rationale to have all sitting on one table so that they can share insights and their challenges and opportunities about the sector within the region, and as well to have this kind of peer-to-peer -peer learning and uh, networking with expertise uh, among the region and outside the region. So the working group basically work as being a platform of networking and sharing expertise among the experts within the region and outside the region, and as well raising awareness of the staff at the regulatory and authorities, uh, um, regulatory and supervisory authorities, because it's really crucial if we're going to talk about regulation of innovation. Uh, it, it as well support the building capacity and developing capacity for 
such uh, regulatory authorities. And this is by either our uh, outputs like drafting guidelines, a policy paper, deep dive on particular issues, or uh, within the seminars uh, and training workshops, like we have conducted already uh, one on the cyber resilience because it, it's cross-cutting the national fintech strategies, which is important. And regarding the approach of regulators, we can see from a regional perspective that we have three types of regulators. One type that acts as an enabler, which adopt regulation to enable new products. They enhance communication channel among fintech ecosystem stakeholders. They create fintech hubs and maybe in the regulatory authority itself and enable growing the uh, fintech ecosystem. We have others that play the role of regulator as innovator. They are really proactive uh, on driving the innovative change in a clear agenda and comprehensive way. And we have a third type of our regulators, which are regulators as oversight or oversee what is happening and regulate the market. Very good. Thank you for that. I think it's, it's good to, to see the sort of breadth uh, of the parties involved, and we'll talk about some of the issues uh, coming back. Firas, over to you. Thank you very much, Douglas. Thank you, everybody. Very good morning and very good afternoon to everybody. It depends on the time difference. Um, uh, to be very honest, it's a pleasure to be uh, a part of this panel discussion on the uh, FinTech Fair, uh, virtual FinTech Fair. Uh, you know, I'm heading the FinTech Committee at the Central Bank uh, of Amman, and of course, Central Bank of Amman is the national central bank of the country. Uh, you know, as, as a fintech committee or, or at Central Bank of Oman, we are looking at promoting and establishing, uh, you know, uh, and the development, you know, to promote the development of the fintech sector in the country. Of course, within our mandates at the Central Bank of Oman, because there is another entities who somehow could touch also on the fintech side. You know, our ultimate goal is, is to facilitate new enablers, you know, uh, and, and related uh, frameworks that could address the market needs uh, and not only the market needs but also the development and to support uh, uh, the drivers underpinning emerging you know uh, uh, technological innovation and development uh, you know to the local to the local sector to the local market in order to help them or to support those institutions to deliver a creative you know sort of a banking and, and financial services you know, at the central bank, we have uh, our priorities plan uh, for the development and enhancements of innovation, uh, you know, in the financial sector, especially uh, taking into consideration the rapid strides that the sector has been making globally and also regionally. Uh, and our continuous, you know, uh, contribution uh, to support the financial inclusion and, of course, the overall economic growth. So how, how we are approaching, you know, uh, uh, as, as a regulator, how we are approaching FinTech. So we, we're working towards establishing, you know, a FinTech ecosystem in the country. That's a comprehensive and neutering sort of an ecosystem in the country. Uh, why? So we can enable and again support uh, the FinTech startups, uh, SMEs, banks, technology firms to develop uh, sort of an innovative solution which will eventually, of course, contribute to the country's economic growth, creates uh, new job opportunities, uh, attract maybe venture capitals, angel capitals to the country. There are many objectives to be very honest, we're working toward it. So we're working also on capitalizing on the local talents within the country. We want really to you know, contain the local talents within the country. So we need to capitalize, we need to incubate, we need to accelerate. You know, earlier the regulator role was only to set the rules and to make sure and overseeing, but now I think it's, it's a bit different. Now we need to work hand on hand, you know, to support these innovations, to support the entrepreneurs. Uh, and of course, our, our, our objective is to work uh, toward the financial integrity, uh, promote society uh, with, with less cash and financial inclusion. Of course, to achieve all these, CBO have Take, uh, Central Bank of Oman has taken steps, a couple of steps, and one of these steps is the is the basically constitution of the uh, FinTech Committee, the formulation of the FinTech Committee, and that shows uh, the the executive management support toward the uh, uh, you know uh, development and innovation in the FinTech in the financial technology uh, space. So we have introduced a number of uh, I would say uh, strategic 
uh, initiatives uh, that support fintech in the country. Uh, so I'll give just quick uh, uh, examples about them. For example, fintech development framework, <clears throat> which basically a holistic plan that targets, you know, all uh, bases and enablers in the sector and the country, which we call it uh, under the um, uh, Amman FinTech ecosystem. And, all, and, and our Amman FinTech ecosystem comprises four beams and seven pillars. And, and very quickly, they are just focusing on, on, on policies, infrastructure, uh, talent, and demand. <clears throat> so those are our four main uh, uh, beams, I would say. Also, we're working up, worked on the introduction of a regulatory framework uh, that could help in attracting and catalyzing you know, the, the, the innovation in, in the sector, such as the FinTech regulatory sandbox, which provides a temporary regulatory exemptions for the FinTechs, for already products, of course. Uh, of course, we're working on the other hand on the uh, development of the national infrastructure, enhancing the integration between the different national entities within the country, sort of a collaboration between the national uh, uh, entities within the country. Moreover, in 2018, <clears throat> uh, we, we, there was a, you know, a royal degree to, uh, to issue a national payment system law uh, and then a sub-regulation sub or the regulation, the, the secondary law, has been issued in 2000, 2019 by our Board of Governance. And the key aspect of this law is that CBO license uh, the payment service providers, uh, uh, non-banks, fintech company considered, or to provide payment service pro to provide payment services to the public. So this is this was a very quick overview what we are doing in this space, how we are approaching it as a as a central bank. Yeah, thanks very much for that. I think you've highlighted very much what. I think my team and I are finding are, are the key elements when we're thinking about a, a sort of fintech innovation development strategy. It's it's the infrastructure, it's the regulatory framework, uh, it's the the sort of wider ecosystem. And Veris, I mean, from that framework, if you're looking out, what are your sort of key focuses now and over the next two or three years? When we, when we look into our, uh, I would say, two to th uh, one to two years of, of main areas or main focus area, we are focusing on building a, a dynamic financial ecosystem, uh, a dynamic, you know, uh, uh, ecosystem that will really foster the financial developments, thus providing uh, uh, sustainable support to, to, you know, to, to the competitive, to the competitive to the competitive and diversified uh, sort of an economic sector. We always make sure that whatever initi initiatives and objectives we are working on, we, they are aligned and in sync with our national 2040 vision at the, at the country level. We, we make sure always they are aligned, you know, which focus on a number of, of national priorities. As an example, we make sure that uh, we enable and support the national priorities uh, of economic diversification, uh, physical sustainability, and also to support the SMEs uh, and entrepreneurs. But of course, we need to make sure, like when we support SMEs and entrepreneurship, when, when it comes to the fintech, practically who are uh, based on innovation, you know, on, um, on the uh, new things, innovative idea, advanced technology. So if I want to summarize about our key focusing area in the next, you know, one to two years, it will be around the adoption of dynamic law and regulation. We're going to talk about development and engagement of national innov innovative uh, talents and skills. Uh, I'm going to say we're working on support the collaboration between the education and academia and the fintech. We need to make sure that like, whatever graduates we get at match the needs of the market or say, of the new market needs. And also the attraction of considerable and, and, and sustainable investments to the sector. Thanks very much for that. And I think you've, you've highlighted a very important point when we talk about talent. And it's something that for me, it's more than just talent. It's actually supporting a sort of wide, wider uh, research and development ecosystem, which talent is one aspect as is financing and the wider environment. Praveena, I think if we look at India. India with India Stack has been clearly by far the most influential 
uh, approach in the context of, of strategy in this area worldwide. And I think it's something that we're all very familiar um, how sort of uh, effective and transformational that process has been. And I think it's something that looking around the world, when, when mm -hmm. I talk about infrastructure, for instance, I'm basically talking about that framework of um, digital biometric identity systems, of simplified accounts opening, uh, of uh, interoperable electronic payment systems, and using these rails for provision of government and private sector services. And so from your standpoint, uh, in the context um, of NPCI, what are you focusing on now and sort of what are your next steps both as NPCI, but also from the standpoint of the, the wider Indian fintech ecosystem? Yeah, that's great, uh, Douglas. You you hit the nail on the head. The India stack has been the, the core foundation on which um, a lot of fintech growth in India has taken place. Um, I think, you know, uh, we were talking about talent some time back. I think in India, uh, it's not a dearth of talent, but a surplus of talent. And, you know, we have to ensure that we are uh, deploying this talent uh, effectively and um, creating an enabling environment so that the good ideas, the great innovative ideas, you know, really find fruition. Uh, from an NPCI standpoint, I think I will sort of bucket it into two spaces. You know, one is, of course, to continue to innovate um, in terms of the, the infrastructure. So just to share with you, uh, on the India stack, you know, beyond the interoperable payment rails, uh, the, the latest addition to that uh, pyramid is really the account aggregator framework. Um, so the account aggregator framework provides a, uh, a, a well-managed uh, with consent framework to actually use data associated, which is there with the you know, bank accounts, uh, which can then be served just as information to various users or can be utilized for purposes like credit and so on and so forth. So the account aggregation layer actually, you know, there's identity payments and now the account aggregation layer is the third one. And then we are hoping to then take it into credit, which, you know, really, um, you know, creates the, the, the right, uh, you know, triangle in terms of completing the, the layers there. Uh, for us, it is taking each one of these and creating the enablement for very innovative infrastructure. So our job is to create the infrastructure and provide the uh, policy framework, uh, the regulatory framework, which will enable the FinTech and the market players to innovate. So the, the core rails need to be created. For example, if you take UPI, which is the interoperable uh, payment system, uh, you know we've recently launched what we call the AutoPay, which is the uh, request to pay mechanism. Uh, but you can use it for repeat payments. So over time, you know, you, people don't have to really worry about their payments at all. So what is what NPCI provides is really the core rails and enables the fintech and the ecosystem players to then innovate over that, whether it's the insurance sector or, you know, whether it is the uh, transportation sector or whether it is the you know, finance sector. So each sector can innovate on these rails to create the last mile solutions. So that's that's on one side. On the other side is the collaborative approach with the ecosystem. So I think it is all about um, engage, feedback, uh, policy, learn, and that sort of cycle keeps going on because we are all the time looking at you know, what's next and what's next happens through the model of engagement. Uh, whether it's the banks or the fintechs, there is a continuous process of you know, what the market needs, what's the you know, feedback of, from merchants, users, you know, all the ecosystem players. Uh, to then identify not just what needs to happen on the infrastructure and the technology side, uh, but also on the uh, policy side. Uh, you know, where, where do uh, certain controls need to be put in place and where do they need to be opened up? And I think that continuous process continues. Um, I would also add to that is the, uh, is the sort of the uh, FinTech enablement acceleration program. So, you know, the Reserve Bank of India runs uh, what we call the the sandbox and it's a policy sandbox so one could actually provide ideas into it which enable thought process and and think tank work on policies and what we do to support that is to have api accelerators which enable fintech to then link in experiment innovate just sort of you know dabble around with whatever is available uh, to create the the next generation of uh, products and solutions in the market so that's sort of broadly the uh, approach we have right now
Yeah, no, very exciting, I think. And I think that's um, a great way to look at it. I think the key to getting the infrastructure is not just um, how it works together, but it's also, as you say, as a foundation for other forms of innovation. And just a, a quick follow on that. What sorts of, of innovations are you seeing that are, are really interesting at the moment? So we have uh, set up our, our innovation lab and you know we really believe that there's a lot of work that artificial intelligence can do to solve problems um, around uh, risk management, around security um, and many other you know, layers thereof. So working closely with analytics um, in terms of the outcomes that can arrive there. The second space would really be around uh, blockchain. So some work happening, there are pilots that are in place uh, you know, potentially real-time uh, settlements uh, and so on. So there are a few spaces that we believe are not just for the next year or two, but a little bit more into the future. And uh, again, you know, we are not the, uh, it's not to provide last mile solutions, but to provide the rails and provide the infrastructure on which uh, fintechs can innovate. So again, these are uh, very collaborative uh, programs. The innovation council that we run is, you know, has participants from banks, participants from corporates, participants from the, uh, you know, fintech ecosystem. So these are the, you know, best brains uh, coming together to really figure out what we need to do next. Yeah, very, very exciting. Nuran, turning to uh, the Arab fintech network and the work that, that you're coordinating, um, I know you all have, have had a very heavy focus on. Uh, the current crisis and issues around that. But as we begin to look forward, what sorts of areas are, are you focusing on? And are you seeing a way that maybe some of the crisis can be used or channeled uh, for some positive developments going forward? Definitely, yes. The COVID-19 repercussions had a lot of opportunities regarding the Arab countries and how they really reacted to the pandemic and the crisis. So uh, for this perspective, we see many, many Arab countries have done a lot of investment uh, in uh, advancement and progress in the regulatory framework regarding the digital payments, the wallet payments. Uh, uh, two to three countries as well have enhanced their uh, digital and EQYC uh, framework and this is really important and we can say that it's um, uh, like a first step in our region and it's really important and one of the most area that we're going to focus on is the digital onboarding, the customer digital onboarding. It's really important for the financial excluded, the elderly, the illiterate, and even for the entrepreneurs for everything. So it, it has a lot of a positive impact. So one of the broad area that we're going to focus on is the digital customer onboarding or the remote onboarding. Uh, doing some work within our hackathon on the EKYC solutions and how we can enhance uh, EKYC solutions in the in the Arab countries. Uh, one um, uh, important topic as well is the open banking framework and the APIs. So the fintech working group will be working or actually working on drafting a framework. Uh, we will have two products. Let's say a vision for the uh, the region on a regional level and a regulatory guide that will provide like a roadmap or checklist and kind of best practices um, to derive some principles for the Arab countries when they would like on individual basis to draft their regulations regarding the APIs and uh, the open banking because it's really a crucial and now it's crucial time for this. Uh, third topic, which is uh, as well important, we're going to continue uh, our support to Arab countries. They would like to formulate uh, their national fintech strategies based on a regional guidelines and a regional site. So, um, and this will be uh, based on the, the main five pillars of the ecosystem that you have mentioned. Uh, demand, uh, talents, uh, funding, uh, laws, policies, and regulations. Um, so this is as well uh, one important issue. Um, and building capacity, so we will continue as well uh, our guidelines. So we have very diversified kinds of uh, countries in terms of capabilities, needs, priorities, buy-in, infrastructure even. 
Um, so it's not an easy task to provide, for example, some of guidelines. However, it's really important or crucial to provide them a, like a framework, roadmap, uh, good practices to frame uh, what they were going to formulate on the individual uh, national level. Also, we're going to continue our dialogue regarding the central bank digital currencies because it's an important issue for the Arab central bankers. We already provided kind of, uh, you know, analytical framework that can serve as um, a broad analytical from framework whenever uh, Arab central bankers need to explore the opportunities of having, uh, does it worse to issue a CBDC or no? depending on very different or diverse motivation, needs, and capabilities, resources, and so on. Um, uh, lastly, uh, we have already issued kind of principles for the tokenization of financial assets and alternative finance. However, we need to do a lot of work and a lot of support to our Arab countries regarding the alternative finance in terms of practices and regulations because it's really, uh, we can gain a lot of opportunities from the alternative finance for financing uh, entrepreneurs and financing, uh, yeah, using the FinTech for finance. Thanks, Nuan, and I think, I think that's uh, a really exciting agenda. And I think something that, that I'm seeing is we're looking at the implications of this current crisis. We're seeing an increase in digitization, the areas that are most subject to change very much uh, in the context of payments, including uh, not only sort of um, traditional, non-traditional payments, but also discussions around CBDCs. Second, really around um, the client onboarding. And I think lots of people looking at how they can build different systems of dealing with market integrity of AML, KYC, and finally, very much around uh, the data questions and the relationship between some of the data aggregations, uh, open banking, and just general uh, data roles in our society. I wonder, just as a, a follow-on, um, you mentioned hackathons. Is this something that um, AMF and the working group are, are looking at, at doing more of these? Yes, we will be, uh, inshallah, we will be running a regional hackathon. And uh, we didn't announce it yet, but however, we will do very, very soon. So this is the first time that we announce this. It will be uh, a month period. Uh, and the hackathon really uh, will be initiated through a problem statement, which is will be initiated from the regulators. And mostly it will be on the EQYC because this is the common area between our regulators until now. Uh, the hackathon will include all uh, uh, banks from the Arab region, fintech companies, service providers, universities, because youth and universities are really important. Uh, and we will have judges from the regulatory authorities and the experts, the industry experts, um, uh, and the field experts as well. Uh, so this is uh, this hackathon aims to embrace fintech innovations for new business opportunities and uh, create uh, fintech uh, ideas and so on on resolving th this uh, problem statement regarding mostly the EQYC we didn't finalize yet because we need to uh, consult with Arab central banks. Uh, and it will, you know, bring some of a partnership on new solution with banks, uh, fintech companies, and so on. How it works, we will be uh, announcing the um, problem st statement after consulting with the uh, Arab regulators. And then we will be through the prototype of solution by fintech startups in collaboration with banks and so on. We will be having as well a series of webinars and we will be concluding by some awards for the winning uh, solution. That sounds very exciting. I think it's something that we're seeing more and more use uh, of this tool. We have the, the sort of uh, G20 BIS uh, hackathon, which I think is really interesting. I think the, the idea from a policy and regulatory standpoint is identifying problems where we as policymakers, we as regulators have challenges and then asking for people to build solutions uh, to those problems, I think is, is potentially um, very powerful. And Firas, that takes me 
uh, really to, you had highlighted um, in your own work um, with, uh, with the FinTech Committee and some of the initiatives in ecosystem building there, some of the efforts in not only dealing with innovation in your work, but also trying to be innovative as a financial regulator. And so from your experiences, what sorts uh, of innovations in financial regulation or innovation in approaches to innovation from a regulatory standpoint are you seeing and what are you all trying yourselves and what sort of experience are you having with those? Well, I think this is a very interesting question. Um, in fact, uh, you know, it's, it, you know, there is, there is always, um, you know, a quote I like it about Steve Jobs about innovation, which says innovation distinguish between leader and follower. So I think uh, innovation should be a key element, not just with the fintech, not just for with regulators. In fact, with with all uh, with all uh, you know areas, because it is indeed a value proposition to the financial sector and to any any sector. However, how this is happening in in, in our country? So we believe that innovation helps the financial institutions uh, to be creative. You know, so as a regulator, when we when we promote innovation. That means it will be, uh, you know, uh, followed by the uh, licensed institutions, financial institutions. So they will be also creative. They will be also innovative. So that will eventually help them to create a new verticals and new business models and new services using the emerging technologies, which will, at the end of the day, will be a good a new investment opportunities uh, to, to, to them. So it, it creates an advantage in the banking sector. It will in the financial sector. It will improve uh, their, their, their services. It will address, uh, you know, a lot of, of risks, as Nuran said, as you said also about the EKYC, the digital onboarding. When we have it on a digital fashion, it will reduce a lot of risks, you know, of having, you know, uh, 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 what say, not a proper uh, mechanism or approach of onboarding customers that might not be complying with the AML and CFT law and so on. Also, it will eventually, you know, help the institutions to meet the customer expectations and satisfaction. So in, in our role, we facilitate and support uh, the digital transformation, uh, not only with the banks, but banks also are using, you know, to be very honest, a cutting edge technologies when it comes to the mobile banking, electronic wallets, and so on. Like, but if we come to Central Bank of Oman, we have the regulatory sandbox, the regulatory sandbox, the innovation hub. We're working on the innovation hub. To be honest, it's not yet uh, launched, but we are on the on the process of of building the innovation hub in collaboration with 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 the uh, relevant key government entities to 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 sort of collaboration. Also, we have implemented uh, uh, one of the new technologies called mobile payment clearing and settlement system (MPCSS), and this is also supported uh, the banking and the financial sector to integrate and to provide. Uh, you know, a new uh, services when it comes to payments uh, and so on. You know, looking at Oman also, when we look into the population as uh, the age distribution, we have 47% of Omanis are, are youth, are from the youth, uh, I would say, range. Uh, we have a good uh, internet penetration rate, uh, mobile connection rates in Oman is, is, is pretty uh, high. Those are all facts will, will you know, support uh, and, and complement, you know, to, to work toward more of, 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 you know, creating more of demand, you know, in the, in the sector to support and drive uh, innovation. So we, we will have multiple of, of initiatives. We believe through this, we will support the innovation in the, in the sector. Thanks for that, Firas. And I think uh, that's uh, a really exciting framework. I wanted um, to turn to, to Praveena and really from your standpoint, Praveena, how are you all using innovation, in particular technology, in your own work? So if we look at the, um, the vision mission statement of NPCI, um, it is to serve a billion people, that's the population of the country, with at least one of the digital payment systems and to be one of the best payment systems globally. So if you look at the kind of payment systems in play, you know, we have something that is the infrastructure that is focused towards the financial inclusion segment. 
um, and this is really based on biometric identity. So somebody's just got to go use their you know thumbprint on a scanner, and they will be able to either take cash out or or make a payment. Um, on the other extreme, we have the mobile-based payment, which is on UPI. And then we have something like Rupee, which works on the card rail. So it sort of spans all the segments of uh, citizens and residents in the country. However, in the current context, we realize with COVID and all the associated requirements to, to stay safe, pay safe, and reduce contact, that there's something that needs to happen around each one of these systems. Uh, to support these requirements in the coming few months. So for example, uh, if you look at the Aadhaar payment system, which is the biometric one, uh, we are moving from just fingerprint based biometric to facial authentication. So that's in pilot stage. And you know we wanna see how that works because that's not gonna have any contact. So people will be able to use it you know, without the challenges of uh, being restrained with just uh, you know, finger based um, biometric. Uh, then if you come to, to Rupee, which is like a card scheme, you know, Rupee again, card is contact, you know, and in India, the two-factor authentication is mandatory, so which means that a PIN also will need to be uh, put on the terminal. So the focus is really on A, going contactless and driving contactless deep into the country. So contactless, you know, of course, there is contactless terminals available in the country today, but perhaps the penetration of that infrastructure is not at the way it, it needs to be. So to really drive the contactless infrastructure and to tokenize the, the cards. So this again was a, was a policy uh, that was uh, published about a year and a half back. And now we are able to actually take it to market so that cards can get tokenized. You know, then you have an NFC phone, you're able to then uh, deploy a contactless payment. Coming to UPI, you know, which by very definition is a mobile based payment system and hence you know, addresses all the requirements of safety, we do realize that today it supports usage from a smartphone. And, you know, India being the country we are of a billion point two people, while there are 500 million odd smartphones available, uh, there is still a very deep part of the population that does not have smartphones and hence does not have access to uh, this payment mechanism, which, um, you know, the, the rest of the population is able to enjoy. So we're challenging ourselves to say, how can we now take this into the feature phone space so that it becomes accessible and available to everybody? So going to the tenets of, uh, you know, ensuring access, universal access, um, you know, which is very affordable and provides the kind of customer experience uh, that creates the true benefits of, um, of efficiency and and uh, ubiquity of utilization. So these, this is really what we want to achieve. And across our entire uh, spectrum of uh, infrastructural offerings, uh, these are some of the focus areas for us now. Thank you for that. And I think, you know, if we think of, of big trends, certainly one trend that, that um, the pandemic is definitely driving new research, new development in is very much in the contactless space. Um, but I'm really excited to hear also um, about the direction in the context of um, digital inclusion, uh, as well as, as the sort of feature phone simpler sort of context. Because after all, certainly the crisis is driving digitization, but one of the risks is that that actually drives a, a greater divide. So I think very, very exciting work. And it's something that from my standpoint, working in financial inclusion, this is an area very much of, of interest and concern. I think if we look at your sort of group of central banks and regulators, what sorts uh, of regulatory innovations are you seeing uh, emerging across the region? So I think, um, you know, I heard uh, uh, Nuran talk about uh, KYC, right? So in fact, we've had regulations around video KYC in, in India recently. And, uh, you know, the market has taken to it. Uh, it it's, it's really caught up like wildfire because that's really the need of the hour. You know, we don't have uh, people to go and have face-to-face uh, -face contact and you don't want to promote face-to-face -face contact, you know, just so that you are able to collect documentation, see the person by face. So this has been extremely enabling and, you know, we're seeing the market really move to that. So I think the whole onboarding space 
um, not just eKYC, but also video KYC, uh, which becomes a very um, full-fledged KYC mechanism, uh, is something that I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about. Um, and the, the digitization, you know, we spoke of tokenization, for example, right? Being able to tokenize a card and hence um, support the requirements for, for contactless. Uh, and, I, and I think we're seeing this uh, across the board. So real-time payment systems itself um, is an innovation that you know, perhaps is there in a few countries, not yet all prevalent, but every market is, is somewhere on the, on the roadmap of getting there. And that becomes a starting point to then enable a number of these other applications. Very much agree. And I was just going to, to pass it to, to Nuran and say, from your standpoint, um, are you seeing similar sorts of things emerging? What are you seeing in, in GCC? Uh, let's say within the across the region, yes, we have seen not only, yani, you have mentioned the financial inclusion, and this is very important for our region. So really, we have seen uh, a lot of efforts uh, gaining by this financial innovation regarding the onboarding, particularly as a repercussions of COVID-19 uh, and all the contactless um, activities, uh, progress in the digital payments, progress in something that really scale up the opportunities for microfinance and SMEs and um, um, the entrepreneurship or the startups, which is the collateral registries, the small assets and intangible uh, registries, which are really helping the entrepreneurs and particularly in the rural areas. So we have seen this evolving and so much after even COVID-19 using the biometric data, using the blockchain. So this was particularly the uh, collateral registries, small assets and intangible assets was like a breakthrough. It, it helped a lot the small entrepreneurs um, uh, at many fronts. And uh, so we can see as well uh, the soup tech and the, the rec tech solution for regulators really enhance uh, their mission um, it's not used so much in our region however many of our Arab central banks are keen really to use the soup tech and the rec tech solutions for the compliance the reporting and uh, they are really keen to you know explore more and use this territory um, and that's it so our yani, our um, main uh, breakthrough is regarding the remote onboarding and uh, the entrepreneurial projects and so on. Thanks very much, Nuran. And I think we're unfortunately coming to, to the end of our, our time today. Uh, and I'd just like to ask uh, each of you, just very quickly, if you had one message uh, for fintechs uh, and others looking at new technologies and innovations and dealing with regulators such as yourselves, what would that be? Firas. I think uh, the, the key word uh, to answer this question is the, again, the collaboration. We need more of a collaboration between the, the mix. Regulators, technology companies, uh, fintechs, uh, education, and so on. Because when we, when we, when we, when we keep, we have to keep in mind, it's not, it's not about just policies. It's not just about regulation, enhancing it. No, it's about the whole ecosystem, how we can all support the FinTech innovation, the new entrants. Okay. And this could happen through cooperation and support from all relevant key stakeholders. For example, if I talk about technology company, uh, te telecommunication companies, they have a role on making sure there is a proper network coverage, proper packages, proper tariffs, and so on. When we talk about, for example, incubators, accelerators, digital labs, for example, we need to have more of a practical analysis, more of an experimentation rather than just you know, theoretical uh, you know, analysis. When we look at the technology companies, we need more new technologies to solve new problems you know, what we are facing. Like the example highlighted by almost everybody in the room here today, virtual room, is the EKYC and the digital onboarding, for example. Education, again, I, I keep highlighting this because we need to make sure also we have a proper talents. We need to have a proper skill sets that will eventually contribute 
to the whole ecosystem and to the innovation and to solving real problems that we are facing. So basically the whole ecosystem, we need a collaboration is the key word, I think, uh, that's, that's I'm looking at. Thanks, Firas. Excellent message. Nuran, from your standpoint, recommendations for fintechs and others dealing with, with regulators? Uh, number one, the collaboration, as Firas has mentioned, it's really important within the whole ecosystem and particularly between the relevant regulators. Whenever we, we have concerned regulators among the national uh, ecosystem, and it's really important as well, this type of collaboration or even partnership between the fintechs and the uh, traditional financial institutions, mainly the banks, because uh, this important collaboration or even partnership will foster a lot of uh, really uh, innovative idea with having uh, the good infrastructure using all uh, the capabilities of both the agile approach and the innovative idea of the fintechs and as well um, the established, well-established regulations, compliance, and even customer base of the, um, the traditional uh, financial institutions. And definitely this, to be successful, it needs to be via a win-win situation. Nobody or uh, neither of both sides uh, dominate the other or having this culture of dominating the other. Uh, one important thing as well is the collaboration between, uh, for example, sharing ideas and sharing knowledge. Uh, we have all these threat of cyber resilience or cyber threats. So sharing uh, the reporting on cyber incidents or educating people uh, in the industry on the cyber threats is really important. Um, so I think this uh, issue of cyber threats is cross-cutting once we talk about fintech activities and fintech industry. So uh, sharing idea, usually we, we, share, we, we, we say sharing is caring. So really, really sharing is caring is, is the main building block in the fintech industry. Very important message, I think. And Praveena, over to you for, for the last message. Yeah, Douglas, you have 100% consensus here, it looks like. So uh, the word I was going to give you was engage, and I think it comes back to, to collaboration. Uh, but I would use the word engage because I think it's about um, fintechs reaching out, you know. Um, so it's a reach out on both sides. So regulators, policymakers, today are continuously having a very consultative, responsive regulatory approach. So white papers are created, uh, committees are formed, uh, papers are put out for consultation, feedback is taken, and there is a fair amount of groundwork that is done before something really is uh, put out back into the market. However, I think the fintechs also have the onus, the responsibility um, of certainly, yes, education, uh, but also providing their feedback, providing their input, you know, uh, talking of the challenges they have, talking about when perhaps something that's prescriptive has to move to principle or principle based education has to move to prescriptive. And, uh, you know, also providing that that consultative input back into the uh, the regulatory and policy making world. Um, I think it's um, it's an approach that needs to be triggered, initiated from both sides. Uh, and that will give us the best results going forward. The good thing is, uh, and you've seen, you know, uh, across the regions, everyone is very open-minded about it. Uh, there is a need for, you know, tell me more, I'm listening, you know, what do we need to do? So I think we all have to take advantage of that and then we will have better outcomes in the days to come. I absolutely agree. And thank you all very much for a really uh, great conversation today. Uh, I learned a lot and I hope uh, that our listeners uh, did as well. Um, back to uh, the organizers, the hosts uh, of the virtual FinTech Festival. Thanks very much. <laughs>